Hello wonderful viewer and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today I wanted to take a look at Space Engine version 0.974 beta which is actually going to be very very close to the official 974 release that's coming out really soon and I just wanted to show you and uh, kind of see myself what has changed and what uh, specific changes will be implemented when this new version will be released and some of these changes are actually absolutely incredible. If you don't know what Space Engine is, it's a free simulator of the entire universe and you absolutely have to get it. It's going to be coming out on Mac soon because the Space Engine creator has actually reached the uh, crowdsourcing mark that he was uh, looking to reach and he promised to create um, a Mac version. It's coming out very, really soon. So if you're a Mac person, be rejoiced. It's coming to your platform soon as well. All right, let's start. We're going to go into Planetarium and let's begin our exploration. All right, so first change right off the bat, you'll notice that as I start moving, we now get streaks of light instead of just points in space. And this applies to both uh, galaxies and stars. So what you're seeing right now is obviously galaxies. If I were to actually go into in one of these galaxies in, inside of it, you would see that uh, you get the same effect for each of the stars as well. So they're, oh, too fast. There we go. There is also the same effect for stars as well. Now, the next most important change is, of course, the change in black hole appearance and the way they behave as well, and uh, various effects related to black holes. Uh, one of the best examples is, and this is actually another addition, uh, we ha finally have our um, central black hole in our Milky Way, and this is Sagittarius A. It's officially added, finally, and it's here, and you can go to it directly, and we're going to go to it directly right now. So. The black holes has ch have changed dramatically. They now have uh, the accretion disks. They now have a lot of glow around them. Unfortunately, the actual um, columns of light that should be coming out of this side and also this side are not in the game yet, but it will hopefully appear soon. This is essentially, um, if you were to fly above the black hole or, or below it, right in this spot, you would see a huge, huge amount of light and all kinds of energy just stream toward you because um, as things come closer to the black hole, they get sort of jetted out into two, into two directions, right above the black hole and right below it, whatever up and, and below is. And But anyway, so nevertheless, this is a pretty cool uh, appearance. We're going to accelerate it a little bit more so you get to see that it's actually spinning. And as you approach this beauty, uh, you'll start noticing some other facts. Well, first of all, this looks a lot like Interstellar now. The movie I'm talking about, the movie, of course. Um, and second of all, as you approach it, you'll notice that there's also going to be a blue shift. So everything here is going to start getting blue um, shifted and it will become more blue than before. And that's the blue shift effect that has been added when you approach to massive bodies. Uh, this applies to both black holes and neutron stars. And there you go. It's, it, it, this is already more blue and even more blue and even more blue and super blue. There you go. Super blue effects. And the other really cool effect is if you actually enter the black hole. So if I were to enter the black hole and look at how the actual universe looks um, as I'm entering it, you would notice that, look at that, it actually turns into this kind of a circle that eventually just disappears. Now, this is a very realistic view of what it would be like if you entered the event horizon, which is actually pretty awesome. And uh, right before the circle disappears, you actually you may have noticed there was a redshift as well, which is also very realistic. Anyway, so now we're inside the singularity. Let's get out of here. Uh, we're going to enter into the universe, which is technically impossible, but for the um, for the sakes of this simulation, it's going to be possible. Now, um, I'm going to show you what the neutron stars look like as well. And here's the one I visited before. We're going to jet to it right away. And there it is. This is actually a pretty awesome system I found very recently. So there is a really cool binary system that has a giant, I believe this is an O-type star. Oh no, this is a wolf Rayet star, about which I'll be talking about very, very soon. This is actually why I decided to save this particular system. So wolf Rayet stars are super awesome. We're going to talk about it sometime this week. But then as you come closer to this other object, you'll notice that this is actually, uh, and I'm sorry for the flickering, I should have put the um, epilepsy warning for this video because it is a little bit... Uh, dangerous for some people that have epilepsy. Oh, no, too far. We went too far. And there we go. So this right here is actually a neutron star. I'm going to slow down time so you get to see that it's actually rotating. Even if, even if I slow down time, it's still rotating really fast. So I guess technically this would be a pulsar. But unfortunately, just like with the black hole, it doesn't have the 
uh, the streams of energy coming out from it but um unlike the black hole you see that the center here is actually not black so i can actually approach it and you'll see that it is um, a very dense star neutron star there it is that's the neutron star right here that also has a bit of a, a lens flare around it because it's so mad um so dense but so massive as well so there's a bit of a lens flare around it it's a pretty cool effect very very awesome very beautiful and very well made all right so let's talk about some other cool additions so one of the uh, additions here is if you go into settings you'll notice that now there's an oculus rift support that's because oculus rift support will be added as soon as the beta version uh, is no longer beta and as soon as 974 comes out so if you have oculus rift you'll be able to actually explore the universe with the oculus which is pretty awesome i don't unfortunately have one yet myself but i do want to get one eventually especially when it gets a little bit cheaper because i think 600 dollars is a little bit too much for oculus anyway moving on and the other addition is this we now have white brown dwarfs um, i'm going to show you what they are these are basically some of the darker stars out there and so these uh, brown dwarfs are actually some of the darker stars out there. They're technically not even stars. If you look at them, this does, doesn't look like a star at all. But technically, just because of the mass, and here the mass would be about 14.6 masses of Jupiter, uh, it, it's sort of between being a star and being a very, very massive gas giant. Now, these are usually very, very dark, and uh, they're also not particularly warm, but uh, there is a bit of heat here. As a matter of fact, this shows us 416 degrees Celsius, which is actually quite hot, and that's because they obviously have a lot of heat generation on the inside due to their mass. Uh, but most of these do not actually have any nuclear reaction, and so for that reason, they're not technically real stars. But despite all of this, they're still very, very beautiful and totally worth your time to explore because look at this gorgeousness. Not only is there some sort of a really beautiful, um, almost like a lava flow on the surface, although that's that's actually gas. That's some sort of a red gas. Uh, there's on top of that a uh, very beautiful aurora around this um, this particular Y-class brown dwarf. Anyway, so moving on. So that's Y brown class dwarfs that have now been added. Really awesome objects. Definitely explore them if you can find them. They're very dark and very hard to find. We now have a very different appearance for Pluto, a lot more realistic than before, and also other Pluto-like objects have now received uh, things like polar caps. They now have a lot of really cool effects on their surface. So this is the new Pluto. Uh, both Pluto and Charon, uh, its uh, main um, satellite, its main moon, have now actually been redesigned completely, and they look very, very beautiful and very, very realistic. So this is Pluto, as it looked in the pictures that we've received from um, the New Horizons mission that was on Pluto sometime last year in 2015. Uh, but uh, now, it's, so there's a lot of really cool additions. Uh, the surface looks kind of interesting, very, very beautiful, very different from before. Uh, and I do believe it is um, not really procedurally generated, so you won't really be seeing any mountains or any really cool uh, features like you do on some other planets. But nevertheless, this does look a little bit more realistic. And the other main addition to Pluto is that, as you may notice, there is a little bit of atmosphere. And that's because we have found a little bit of atmosphere on Pluto. And so you can kind of see it right there, right above the surface of Pluto. It's absolutely awesome, and I think it's a really good addition. And speaking of atmospheres, uh, if you look at this right here, this is another addition. Now the atmospheres actually have composition. Uh, this is kind of, it adds a whole new level of chemistry. As, as a matter of fact, if you're a chemistry enthusiast or a teacher or a student, you may actually want to explore this in more detail because every planet, every object now has atmospheric composition and it's always going to be different depending on the elements that are present and will also create different colors as well. Oh, by the way, here's Sharon. We can actually go and take a look at it as well as it just passed by uh, the horizon of... Pluto. So this is what Sharon looks like. It doesn't actually have any um, atmosphere, but uh, nevertheless, it's a relatively large object. The other main object that received a texture update is Ceres, which is, of course, the, uh, the closest dwarf planet to us, or as uh, some people think of it, the largest asteroids. And this is what Ceres looks like. And uh, I'm not sure how realistic this is, because to me, Ceres is a little bit more spherical than this. Uh, but nevertheless, this is the new texture that it has, and this is what it looks like in the new version uh, that will be coming out really soon. And in terms of another really major addition that changes the visual appear appearance of this game is the way that the atmosphere is being rendered now. So I'm going to go to a random planet here. 
let's go to this planet right here and just show you what the atmosphere looks like okay this is a gas giant that's not exactly what i wanted but this is a very large gas giant holy cow has a lot of different moons orbiting around it let's actually maybe see if we can find some atmosphere on one of these moons all right none of these had atmosphere but i'm sure we can find something nearby and here is a planet that actually does have atmosphere on it and quite a lot of different elements. And so if you actually go on this planet, you'll notice that uh, if you've played the previous versions of the game, now the atmospheres actually look really, really cool. They are a lot more dynamic. There's a lot more stuff going on on them. And um, here, I'm going to try to accelerate time a little bit just so you get to see how it actually now looks different. There's a lot of different clouds, a lot of different rendering effects and uh even the colors look a little bit more more diverse more dynamic so it's a lot more beautiful than it used to be and probably a lot more interesting because you'll get to explore and find all of these really cool looking planets that didn't actually exist in previous versions of the game and a lot of these colors will obviously depend on the chemical composition so this particular atmosphere has this in it and because of this it has that color and you can actually explore this in more detail as you fly through the universe and discover new planets and I think this kind of cover is the most important in the major changes that will be coming to Space Engine. Um, I guess maybe one more change was that I, th I believe Saturn also got the upgraded rings now. So the rings of Saturn look a little bit different from what they looked like before. Uh, but other than that, this is essentially it. For me, the biggest change is, of course, the black holes. They look absolutely gorgeous now. Uh, also, the fact that Sagittarius um, A is now available right here just by typing it you can go directly to it right away and a lot of the other objects um that were recently discovered has have also actually been added you have quite a lot of new objects here that you can find and explore and so all in all this game is definitely improving dramatically and because it's been able to uh, raise so much money uh, through crowdsourcing through donations so if you do want to support it and if you want to donate a few bucks just to make this game better in the future uh don't hesitate because i mean this is absolutely free for everyone and it's going to be out on Max and uh, Linux as well. So give this uh, game a go and definitely consider supporting it. Anyway, that's all for this particular video. I just wanted to explore the new features uh, that will be coming out in 9.7.4 version of Space Engine. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with people that you think may want to try this awesome, beautiful uh, space simulator. And uh, do like this video if you've enjoyed watching it. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.